Without question, science is humanity's greatest achievement. The beauty, the fascination, the ingenuity of, of discovery, it shows you that it's managed to tap into this very extraordinary thing, which is intelligence and curiosity. People have got to wake up to the fact that they have to be part of the story of thinking about science and thinking about the meaning of science for our world. People tend to think of science as this great monolith and a, a great building without windows and at the doors the keeper of the keys are wearing white coats and nobody else is allowed in and they may feel rather excluded from the debate. They use laptops, they fly in aeroplanes, they use appliances in their homes. They don't know how they work, they don't know what's behind all that technology. That signals a problem. It's turning the population at large into the slaves of our technologies. The less informed they are, the less they uh, know, the more they're likely to be manipulated or influenced by people who may not have their best interests at heart. There's a whole world behind every little object that is scientifically derived. And to have some insight into this, to know something about it, is the responsibility of a, an intelligent and educated person. It's also fascinating, but it's also consequential. People are aware, of course, that there are lots of problems with the environment, with the climate. If people knew more about the, the science involved then, and in particular if they knew what kinds of policy decisions were being made about spending on those areas of science, they might be inclined to press governments, press politicians. The better informed they are, the more active, the more useful participants they are in our social decision-making processes. If we look at the possibilities of uh, trying to encourage uh, our society to become a much, much more scientifically alert and literate one, of course we have to start at school. Our traditional way of teaching science, which is to teach it as if the people learning it are going on to be scientists, for many people that's not the way to go. They could be taught about science, they could have a good understanding of it, which doesn't require of them technical expertise. Then our universities. Our universities tend to be very over-specialised very early on. An educated person should be challenged to know something across the whole width of the humanities and, and the sciences. And then in society at large, there should be much more interchange between people working at the coalface face in science and people out there on the street. Now is the time when we've got to say to people, you really are in danger of being left behind. You're just not going to know what the heck is happening, how things work, and therefore you're not going to be able to take any kind of role in th this discussion. Should we go on in that direction? What should we be using our resources for? We have to have a healthy scepticism about things. We've got to evaluate the evidence. We've got to look at the arguments that are put before us. This is a responsibility, an intellectual responsibility. And people can't just shut their eyes and turn away from things of, of great importance. Look back at, let us say, the late medieval period or the early Renaissance, when everybody in Europe shared a common outlook, a common belief. Everybody was Christian. And Christian doctrine, Christian metaphysics and ethics shaped the way people thought about the world and responded to the world. It was a kind of totalizing mindset everybody shared. Imagine if that were the case today with science. So here is an opportunity. We now have the technology, we have the opportunity to go out there and capture imaginations and invite people in to a much better and deeper understanding of these things.